Hello, and welcome to Lecture 4 of Aerospace Propulsion. So, today we begin uh, the second topic, of course. We spent the first three lectures speaking about uh, and learning about rocket propulsion. So, uh, that is now covered. Um, we, we've done that. Looking at the variety of different types of aerospace propulsion systems, these can broadly be categorized into four areas. We're done with rockets. One that we're not going to talk about this in this course is uh, pulse and pulse detonation engines. Um, these are sort of experimental ideas that are not still widely used. Um, the other two are gas turbine engines and uh, piston engines or spark ignition engines uh, coupled with propellers. And so this is what we're going to do now. Uh, we're going to talk about spark ignition engines uh, in this lecture and the next one. And in lecture six, we'll talk a little bit about the performance of propellers. Then for the remainder of the course, we'll focus on gas turbine engines. So different engine types suit different types of aircraft missions. So when we're thinking about internal combustion or spark ignition engines, these are typically uh, suitable for applications where power requirements up to in the order of a thousand horsepower are needed. So this is sort of the low to mid end of, of power requirements for aircraft. Um, and, we're, and also where um, flight at high altitude is not needed, so low to medium altitudes less than, say, about five kilometers. And within this, there's a huge variety of engine configurations that uh, can be and have been used. Um, so inline or V engines can have anywhere from four to 12 cylinders. Um, boxer or horizontally opposed engines typically have fewer cylinders. And radial engines, which are something that's sort of very specific to aircraft engines, um, can in some cases have up to 15 cylinders. So here's a schematic illustration of the different types of configurations. So the V and inline engine configurations um, should be very familiar to, to most of you, I imagine, since most of uh, the cars you'll have driven in in your life will have had one or the other of these configurations. Horizontally opposed and boxer engines are also used in some, uh, in some vehicles. Um, that that you may be familiar with, and they're also used. All of these are also used in aircraft. And the one on the bottom right here, the radial engine. This is, I would say, the the aerospace specific engine configuration. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about why uh, that's the case today. But in this configuration, essentially, the cylinders are are arranged in a radial uh, pattern around uh, the central crankshaft. So here's an example of a V configuration engine in an aircraft. Uh, this is the, the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. This is sort of a World War II era uh, engine. Um, this is a 12-cylinder V uh, configuration. Um, and if you look inside, it doesn't look too different from a, from a car engine, right? It's, it, there, we'll, we'll talk later today about some of the important differences in aerospace engines compared to those used in the automotive industry or other land-based applications. But notionally, it, it, it's not dramatically different looking. On the other hand, uh, radial engines look like nothing that you will ever see on a land vehicle. Uh, so this is the Brist Bristol Hercules uh, engine with sleeve valves. Um, and on the left here, we see a front view of the engine where you can see that there are these series of, of uh, radial uh, radially distributed or circumferentially distributed uh, cylinders, uh, and they they are in two rows and off, off with offsets between each one. When we look at the back of the engine on the right, we see the the, the mechanical engineering beauty of the valve timing gears for this engine, which is a little bit complicated. But at the end of the day, you know, this is just a typical machine dynamics problem, right? I mean, you learned how to deal with this sort of thing in third year. So no problem for uh, engineering students nowadays, I would imagine. These radial engines are very complicated, as we just saw. Uh, but they do have a big advantage. They are short. They're act in the axial direction or the direction that's uh, parallel to the crankshaft. They're very short. And this makes them quite s suitable. Um, for sort of sticking on, on an aircraft uh, because you don't sort of need a lot of, of axial length to be able to accommodate them. 
So looking at this Bristol Hercules engine in a little bit more detail, just as an example, so this is a 14-cylinder engine, so there was two rows of seven, seven cylinders. Here's an important difference is with these types of engines, and in many cases, um, to keep the engine lighter, there's no liquid cooling system like we would find in a typical um, spark ignition system, uh, spark ignition engine. Instead, the engine's air-cooled. Uh, and these sleeve valves are what, what control uh, the, the flow of the gases, and we'll see that in a little bit more detail in a moment. The displacement is huge. Um, the compression ratio is quite low, only 7 to 1, um, despite this being a supercharged engine. But this is a very old design, so some, to some extent this is mechanical limitations uh, on the materials and also reliability um, requirements sort of lower the acceptable compression ratios. Um, but this this in engine could output nearly 2,000 horsepower or one and a half megawatts, um, and for for a power to weight ratio of 1.6 kilowatts per kilograms. So these sleeve valves are sort of one of the really interesting and unique parts of these engines, and this is a really clever solution for uh, keeping the engine light by avoiding uh, any need for intake or exhaust manifolds or ducting. So I'm going to show you an animation um, uh, which is not perfectly accurate, but schematically captures the point um, of, of what exactly uh, is going on in these engines when they're in operation. So here's a schematic illustration, right? It's a simplification of the engine, but you can see the valve gear is all in place and is driven by the crankshaft. And as the animation proceeds, and we can just now see the sleeve valves moving up and down with the crankshaft. Uh, of course, very slowly in this animation, so we can see going, what's going on. There's two intake and two exhaust ports. But what we can see happens is that these uh, valves both move up and down and rotate a little bit. And now we see the intake and exhaust ports and see how at various points in the stroke cycle as the piston moves up and down, um, the exhaust or intake ports are opened and closed. So now returning to our slides. There are pros and cons of using these spark ignition piston engines. So for aircraft engines, again, assuming the power requirements are in the applicable range, um, what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of using internal combustion or spark ignition engines for, for aerospace propulsion? So I'd like you to think about this for a few minutes and then try to come up with an answer for yourself um, before we move on to the next part of the video.